What's up guys, this is Wences. Welcome back to my channel where we talk about personal development for INFJs and how to create an epic life on your terms. Today we're talking about why INFJs develop unhealthy attachments. We all know that we as INFJs can have beautiful relationships, deep bonds, but on the flip side, we can also create and develop those unhealthy attachments and it has everything to do with our cognitive function. So this is what we're gonna talk about today because you need to be able to recognize this pattern in order to change it and create healthy happy relationships that bring you forward in your life before we get started I want to remind you that you can now book again coaching sessions one-on-one -on -one with me and if you want to take advantage of the current prices then book a discovery call before February 1st because then we'll have new prices so why do INFJs develop unhealthy attachments in a lot of ways it has to do with the fact that we live vicariously through other people we at least have the ability to and it's it's such a quick fix to get our emotional needs met. The way our cognitive functions are set up, NI and FE are our strongest force, right? That means we on the one hand can imagine how things are going to feel like and we're going to imagine how others are gonna feel like through our actions. This creates a huge imagination for us and with that we also create endorphins. Remember our mind can't distinguish between what is reality and what is just happening in our mind. And we as INFJs very often get to this point where we can't distinguish those two. And the sooner we know this, the better we can handle it. So I always say, just know your weaknesses, know how to handle them, know how to approach them and all is good. I don't need to fix absolutely everything. I just need to know these are my roadblocks. These are the things I need to take care of. And then I avoid most of the mistakes that keep me stuck at a certain space. So what would you consider an unhealthy attachment? In my experience, it has always been when we know need people in order to feel fulfilled. You've probably experienced this yourself. Maybe it's a romantic partner, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a group of people. And if we're that dependent on one person or a group of people, we are willing to do things that are not always healthy for us. That is a place where your boundaries are being crossed. And because we cannot really distinguish between what is reality and what is our imagination, we very often create the story in our mind that justifies why we're doing this. So it doesn't feel like, oh, that person is bad for me. I shouldn't be hanging out with them. That's not making me happy. If it was that clear, most of us wouldn't do it. But most of the time we feel like, okay, that's a really great person. With that person, I have a connection like I've never had before. With these people, I'm going to have fun like no other way possible. Those are the stories that we keep telling our mind because we need those justifications and our mind will bring them to us. That's what our mind is really great at. This is not an INFJ thing. This is just happening in general. So if you know that a certain situation with a person will give you an emotional payoff you are much more likely to find an explanation within your mind that makes this sound good so listening to your inner guidance is probably not going to help you very often we say okay listen to your intuition you know what's right or wrong well I don't know I've been around people even people who are good all great no problem with them whatsoever but they weren't the right kind of people for my life and even if they were it wasn't the right kind of relationship dynamic I have told you this before you can be in a relationship and I'm not just talking about romantic relationships also work relationship friendships family you can be with the same people and have a different dynamic and therefore you create like a completely new relationship it's like you're talking to another person because you are different you are different towards them so that dynamic is the thing that we have to look for and just because your mind tells you oh that person is the best thing that ever happened to you well look at the facts look at where your life is heading does your life including that person go towards a place where you want it to be that's the only question here so you have to have a vision you have to have a goal of where you want to go it doesn't have to be specific it's not like okay I have to live in that city and now this person comes into my life and they want to live in another city and because I decided on that first city that's the wrong person for me but does your life plan go forward is it something that develops because most of the time we have this huge imagination of how great it could be again 
doesn't have to be a romantic partner. Just imagine you have this group of friends and you feel like, okay, now I feel completely alive. I feel seen, I feel respected. And because that is what your imagination projects into what's going to happen in the future. Maybe up until now, you've only spent, you know, let's say a couple of weeks with those people. After a couple of months, then you realize, well, it doesn't develop the way I want it to. In my mind, these people are without fault. In my mind, they have like this great adventure in front of them and I just want to be part of that. I want to experience everything vicariously through them but the reality looks a little different. So most of the time, the people have been flaky. Most of the time, you don't feel like you're being included. It's always a waiting game. Those are great signs to recognize that we have created an unhealthy attachment because the unhealthy attachment is based on two facts here. Number one, we really need those people. We feel like if they weren't in our life, my life would be boring, my life wouldn't have meaning, the list goes on and on. It could also give your life meaning because there's somebody you could safe. That's also very typical for INFJs that we find people where we feel like, okay, now I have meaning because I'm the only one who can see that they're suffering. I can help them. But the feedback you're getting is not the one you want. That person doesn't want your help. That person doesn't appreciate your help. And the list goes on and on. So that unhealthy attachment is firstly based on the fact that we feel like we need that person. And second of all, on the fact that because we need that person, we are not able to create healthy boundaries. It's of course a combination of both of them and both of them wouldn't be a problem if that person, that group, whatever's going on is helping you move forward in life. But very often we get to a point where it's not. We're waiting, things are going to get better, that person really loves me or that person really likes me. They are really great people, but are they helping you to move forward? And then the question arises, why are we getting to this point? Why are we living vicariously through other people? Why aren't we at a point where we don't need that attachment? Because that's the goal. I wanna have friendships. I wanna have relationships that are mutually beneficial and they can only be mutually beneficial if you first off make sure that your needs are being fulfilled and then you help that other person get their needs fulfilled as well. That is a necessity. If you firstly focus only on what the other person wants, it's not going to work out because you're always going to feel like something is missing and you're going to be waiting and hoping that something will change. So how do we create a situation where we don't need the other person? We create that by understanding, and that's crucial at this point, because all of this is happening on a subconscious level. You cannot wait for your feeling to tell you otherwise. It's about knowing that we all project, not just INFJs, all of us. We project our reality onto the outside. The people who accept this stay in our life. The people who have a completely different view of reality move away. Or if you have contradicting ones and you're basing your reality on the fact that you're going to fight with somebody, that person is going to stay. So the list goes on and on. We all know this to be true. So if we know that we're projecting and we know that this situation is not leading my reality to a better place, remember, it's not your mindset, it's your reality. Is it moving forward? Are you making making progress in any way? Are you moving towards the goals and the life that you wanted? Remember always to think about externally observable facts. If you would be telling that story or how that relationship is going on to another person, would they also say yes? that's the right choice. Or would they say, well, is that really making you feel good in the long run? Or is it that you always find a way to spin it in a way that makes you feel good? So we take it a step higher. We know that these things are going on. We know they're happening on a subconscious level and we are going to take charge of them. So how are we doing that? We ask ourselves, what am I getting out of this relationship? How is this helping me to see the world differently? And it's very seldom something like, okay, that person has great connections or that person has a great taste of music. It's not something like this. It is much deeper than this. It could be that that person enjoys life so much more than you. And you feel like the only way you can do that is by being close to that person, by absorbing everything that's going on in their life and through that getting an emotional payout. It could also be that that person is living every single day to the fullest and you're not. And because you're around that person, you get to experience this as well. Remember, we project on the outside what we don't want to take on as our own. And very 
very often we do this because of the negative consequences that that might bring. So for example, let's say you have a person that lives life to the fullest and that person is around you and you're willing to make sacrifice on your boundaries. You're not having healthy attachment because you need this person in your life. You feel like that's my solution. That is the thing that's going to make me feel alive. And whatever you do, you cannot let that person go. And if you would, it would always be at the price of feeling alive. But take that as a great indication of what your mind wants. Because I can guarantee you, if I would see that person or somebody else, they wouldn't experience this. You're experiencing this when you're around that person. That means it is you who is projecting some kind of emotion onto that person. You are doing this. You are feeling these things. So if you can feel them while projecting them on somebody else, that means that you can feel them yourself as well. But what is keeping you from this? Maybe it's because you feel like if you would live out life to the fullest, you would lose attachments to other people in a way of, I can't understand them anymore. If I focus on me, then I'm not going to be safe. These things are based on childhood and so many things that have happened in the past. And we as INFJs take on so much of this because we're impressionable this way. But take that as the greatest indication ever of I can do this myself. What is keeping me from this? What is my biggest fear? And it's a psychological fear. It's very often fear of abandonment, fear of being seen as imperfect because deep down we feel we're not enough. These things are human, these things are normal, but I can guarantee you we can handle them. Because if you look at it from a step above and you understand that this is what's going on, you're not going to allow these fears and these emotions to get the better of you. You know that this is going on, you know that it affects your body, and that's why you're keeping yourself in this dynamic because you need it so much. There's no other way you could do it, but there is. That's the whole thing, there is. So once you recognize this, it's time to create that emotion for yourself. And in order to do that, we have to be willing to pay the price. And that price is abandonment. That price is being seen for the person that you are, that you're completely ashamed of. Remember, those things aren't true, but that doesn't matter. On some level, you believe them. It, it might be that four-year-old version of yourself who feels like, if now I live out completely everything that I want, if I say what I mean, people are going to abandon me. Because when I was four and I started doing this, my father reacted this way. Or I can cannot shine within this group because when I was in first grade, everybody told me I have to stay small in order to be part of that group. And back then, I wasn't strong enough. Now we're adults. Now we can handle this. It's hard, but remember the pain that you're feeling is not based on what's happening in reality right now. It's based on something that happened back in the day. And if you keep telling yourself, but that's not true, I'm not going to be abandoned. I'm not going to be seen for imperfect because I'm a perfect being. And deep down, you still believe that it's not going to heal the process. You have to get to a point where you face that pain because that pain really happened. Because as long as you tell yourself, this is not really true, what you're actually doing is you're telling your four-year-old version of yourself, your opinion doesn't matter. Your feelings don't matter. Your beliefs don't matter. But they happen. That four-year-old version of yourself actually felt those feelings. So acknowledge them, feel the pain. Remember, we have to feel it in order to heal it. So if you know, okay, now I want to live out my truth. I want to say what I mean. And yes, there will be negative consequences. People are going to react a certain way because that's how I've built my reality so far based on the fact that I have to stay small. So of course the people around me expect this from me because that's how I've been acting. So once you step out, once you become that bigger version of yourself, yes, you're going to have that reaction. And yes, you're going to be faced with that pain that you kept hidden for so long, but you can handle it. Remember Remember when you feel that pain, it is not based on what's going on right now. It's a feeling that you've been carrying with yourself forever. You feel that pain, you go through it and through that you heal it because then once you've experienced this pain, it cannot scare you anymore. Then you're not going to be scared to live out your complete self. You're not going to be scared to tell your opinion and people not liking it. And then you're going to get to a point where you're not dependent anymore on those unhealthy attachments because the emotional payout that you were getting through that relationship, because you were living through them vicariously, now 
you can create on your own. Because the fear of the pain that kept you small for so long, you have already mastered. I really hope that helped you and inspired you to step out into your own and create that INFJ epic life that you deserve. Remember, if you want to take the next step in creating your INFJ epic life, then work with me privately, all the information you find below. And if you book a discovery call by the end of January 31st, then you're going to get access to the current prices. And if you want to watch another video now that is in alignment with today's topic, then watch the video on INFJs who don't care. Like always, guys, I wish you a wonderful day, a great week, and I'll talk to you next time.